In this video, we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head matchup between the Bosch 18 seer system and the Daikin Fit, and we're going to be talking about some of the other Bosch product lines that are available. We're going to be talking about why the Bosch 18 seer system is so revolutionary. We're going to talk about the rebates and the tax credits that it qualifies for. And at the end of this video, there'll be a link to several other videos about some other Bosch products that are available on the market, as well as the Daikin Fit, and a few other videos that YouTube thinks you should watch. So make sure you check those out at the end if you haven't done so already. And before we get Get started if you haven't done so already please consider subscribing to the channel if this is your first time tuning in it takes a lot of time and energy to put out content like this especially these videos we do get pretty technical I did do a lot of research and dive into the COP ratings and things like that so we're gonna break down what those actually are and what that means but the bottom line is it takes a lot of energy and time to put out videos like this and your support is much appreciated and all a great way that you can show support is just by subscribing to the channel or smashing that like button if you find this content helpful or I won't twist your arm to do it, but it's much appreciated. So if you do find this enjoyable, please consider subscribing. Now, first off, let's talk about the COP ratings. Now, these actually will vary and fluctuate. So at the end of this video, I'm going to actually, when we do the head-to-head -head comparison between the Bosch 18 Sear system and the Daikin Fit, we'll actually have the some screen recordings of the actual manuals and charts so we can show you what some of those COP ratings are and how you can calculate that. But the bottom line is that the COP of this system qualifies it as a cold climate heat pump. And this is true, not just for how it functions, but from the perspective of qualifying for the heat pump tax credit that is currently available in the amount of $2,000. Now, that's a federal tax credit. We talk about this a lot in other videos. If you're curious about how that tax credit works, I'll make sure to link a video at the end that breaks it down. But the bottom line is it qualifies for that rebate. And it also is one of the few heat pumps that qualifies in Excel territory in Denver, Colorado, which is one state where we have a branch. And that particular territory happens to be very difficult to qualify for rebates because the EER rating requirements is 11.7 in order to qualify a heat pump for their rebate. But in Excel territory, it actually qualifies. So it qualifies for that additional $1,700 rebate. This is going to vary by the tonnage. So I know for a fact the two ton and the four ton system do qualify, but this is going to vary across the board because every system qualifies in the Phoenix Metro be in SRP territory because they meet the requirements for the top tier rebate in SRP territory. This is also true for a lot of other metros in Texas. It's really gonna vary, but the bottom line is that this is a very efficient system. And so I wanna talk about the SEER 2 ratings. We're gonna talk a little bit about the HSPF ratings, and then we're gonna do the head-to-head -head comparison between the Dyke and Fit. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of background on some of the other features that Bosch has that makes this system rather unique when compared to its other inverter counterparts. Now the SEER 2 rating is up to 18.5. Like I mentioned earlier, this actual SEER rating is going to vary depending on the AHRI matchup and which air handler or furnace the system is paired with. That's going to affect its overall efficiency and efficiency rating, but that SEER rating is 18.5 and the HSPF rating or the HSPF2 rating is 9.5. So this is a very efficient system and it's also an inverter driven system. Now, if you're not familiar with what an inverter is and how they work. If you're comparing an inverter to a car and you were comparing it to a single stage system or a two stage system, the difference is that an inverter ramps up and down along a continuum. Now, most of the Bosch products, like for example, this system, it starts off, it can go as low as 26% capacity all the way up to 130% capacity. The 15 seer system actually only goes up to 110% capacity in terms of its operating bandwidth and its output. That does not mean that the five tons system can then you know, provide seven tons of cooling. So I wouldn't read into it like that because at higher ambient temperatures, it will actually start to derate. This is true for all systems, not just the Bosch product line. So, and same thing in low ambient temperatures, as it gets colder, it derates in terms of its effective heating output. So when I say it can go from from 30%, you know, to 130%, don't take that as that you're going to get a little bit bigger system because that's not exactly how it hands out. You're going to just want to, if it is calculated as a five ton system, you're going to want to assume, hey, this is a five ton system. But the bottom line is that the Bosch system, it's an inverter. And so rather than being on or off like a traditional single stage system, it ramps up and down along a continuum. And the reason this is such a, a much better technology when it comes to HVAC in terms of both comfort and efficiency is number one, imagine if every time you turned on your car, it just sped up to a hundred miles an hour as fast as possible. Well, that's what happens when you have a single stage system. But when you have an inverter system like this, when it first kicks on, 
it basically ramps up slowly, kind of like how your car works, right? You give it a little bit of gas and it starts to accelerate. And so that's why the Bosch product line or just any inverter system is going to be a better system compared to a single stage because they ramp up and down along a continuum. So this means it's uh, much more efficient, but in addition, it's actually a lot quieter. Now, I'll make sure to link Bosch's site in the description so that way you have a link to their products and you can check it out for themselves. But if you look at the decibel ratings that they advertise, they have uh, decibel ratings as low as 55 decibels on some of the units, as high as, you know, 60 on some of the units. So the bottom line is that is a very efficient system. To give you a comparison, a traditional single stage system, maybe something that's 10 years old, is probably 70, maybe 75 decibels, depending on which one you installed, whether or not it has a compressor sound blank and things like that. So it's definitely a lot quieter. Um, it's very noticeable, like when we're outside and it's running, you know, it could be 10 feet away and you would hear it, but it's gonna be a minor hum by comparison. So this comes in great if you do a lot of barbecuing outside in the summer and the air conditioner is still running, people are going in and out of the house, you don't hear the AC as much. And so that's a great feature. It's one of our favorite things about inverter technology. And this is one of the reasons we sold a lot of Daikin Fits and we still sell a lot of Daikin Fits. It's our, our best selling product because it's so quiet. It's also an inverter driven product. That quiet factor makes it a lot more comfortable to where people really enjoy it. Now, one of the benefits of the system is that by comparison with the Daikin Fit is who has a Daikin Fit knows that it requires you to have a proprietary thermostat, which is the Daikin One or the Daikin One Touch. And some people don't like this because instead of getting the choice to have have an Ecobee or a Nest or some other type of Wi-Fi thermostat. Maybe you have a specific thermostat that integrates with a smart home system or some type of a, you know Wi-Fi integration with your security system. Unfortunately, the Daikin One, even though it will integrate um, with a lot of you know home automation, it doesn't integrate with everything. And so some people want to be able to pick and choose their thermostat. And with the Daikin Fit system, you can't. However, with the Bosch system, because it's a non-communicating system, that means you can put in basically any thermostat that you choose. So you can put in a Nest thermostat, you can put in a Bosch thermostat, although you don't need to. You can put, and they even tell us that, they say, you know, you don't need the Bosch thermostat by any means. You can put in an Ecobee, you can put in a variety of different thermostats, but the big thing is that the Bosch system qualifies with a variety of thermostats. They actually prefer dumb thermostats, so a basic like on-off thermostat or a basic programmable, because if you have learning features turned on on your Nest or your Ecobee, that can cause issues with the inverter in terms of how it functions. It's better to just allow it to ramp up and then ramp down based on how it's receiving you know the signal from the thermostat and it's set up to like I said function as a non-communicating system and we explain how a communicating system works differently in the Daikin Fit video so I'll make sure to link that at the end so you can watch that video but the bottom line is that this is actually a very nice feature to have because you have a variety of thermostats that you can choose from in case there's one that uh, you had your mind set on now you can use that thermostat with this system. So now that we've talked about some of the comparisons between the two systems, I wanna talk about one thing that I do prefer from the Bosch uh, before we jump to the COP charts where I actually go through the efficiency ratings of the two systems so you can actually see the difference between how these systems operate at varying temperatures because this will be kind of an eye opener and show you the difference between the two systems. But one thing that I, I love about the Bosch system, I mentioned it earlier, but it qualifies for some of the rebates that the Daikin Fit system does not qualify for because it has those higher EER ratings. Right now, let's go ahead and I'll grab my laptop and I'll show you these charts and we can dive into the COP ratings between the Bosch 18 seer system and compare those with the Daikin Fit. All right, so right now I've got our performance charts pulled up for the Bosch system and the Daikin Fit system. This is for the Bosch 18 seer as well as uh, the Daikin Fit. And don't worry, I'm gonna explain what all that gibberish on the screen uh, means in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and link this website. This is Bosch's you know, home comfort website that breaks down all the models, uh, but it goes through this 18 seer heat pump, provides all the details. If you're interested in, you know, learning more about the product or you haven't visited their website yet, I'll make sure to link that in the description. But that being said, let's go ahead and pull up the manual for the Bosch system. So you can see what we're looking at in terms of efficiency, you know, how this thing actually stacks up compared to the Daikin Fit. Now, one thing I want to do first is just explain kind of this chart. So at the top here, you can see the model. This looks like a three ton system, but that's actually 
actually because the Bosch, the 18 seer and the 20 seer, they actually only come in a three ton and a five ton in terms of size for the condenser. And then when you pair it with the, the indoor air handler or the furnace or whatever you pair it with inside is when you actually set the capacity. So if it's a two ton, you're actually going to be using a three ton condenser. And then if it's a four ton, you're actually using a five ton condenser. And that's just how the system is designed. And then on the top here, these numbers are actually your outdoor ambient temperatures. So if you're heating when it's five degrees outside, and this is in Fahrenheit versus if you're heating when it's 86 degrees outside, which again, I don't know anyone who heats their house when it's 86 degrees outside. But to give you an apples to apples comparison, what we're going to do is we're going to compare the performance of the Bosch system and the Daikin Fit system at uh, 47 degrees Fahrenheit as well as 5 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to give you an idea of the range of the COPs and uh, which is your you know coefficient of performance at various temperatures. And five is an important uh, number because five is actually the temperature at which a system qualifies for the cold climate heat pump tax credit, which currently in order to qualify for that, there's a few things you have to do. We talk about it in a lot of other videos, So, but I'll touch on it briefly. You basically have to maintain 75% capacity and you also have to maintain, in order to qualify for a cold climate heat pump uh, or, or for that title, you have to maintain 75% capacity at five degrees Fahrenheit. And so that means, you know, if it's a two ton system, it has to be heating at least, you know, providing one and a half tons, for example, of heat at five degrees Fahrenheit in order to qualify as a cold climate heat pump. In addition, it has to maintain a COP of 1.75, which will show you uh, how the system does that. Now, on the left side of this chart over here, this is all, you know, 550, 620, 680. This is all the airflow and CFM. So that's cubic feet per minute. And so right here where it says, you know, 720 CFM, if we look at what that means is that at 720 CFM, that's the power that this system consumes. So that's why all this, you know, these numbers look like, might look like gibberish to you, but I'll, I'll break it down here in a second. And then for each of these airflow settings, you have the indoor temperature set point of 60, 70, 75, or 80, depending on how high you're heating to. Again, I don't know anyone that heats their house to 80 degrees, but um, we're going to be using 70 just to have kind of a neutral set point. And then when we scroll over here and we look at given, you know, kilowatt rating in, a, in TC, this is a total capacity in BTUs. We're going to actually have to convert this number. So 19.2 actually means 19,200 BTUs per hour, you know, heat output. We're actually going to have to uh, convert that to kilowatts of heat energy. And we do that by multiplying that by 0.93, which I'll explain in a second. And then this kilowatt is the kilowatt consumption of the system at a given temperature. So as you can see, you know, when it's 72 degrees outside, this thing, you know, the power consumption is much less than when uh, it's five degrees outside. Hey, the heat pump starts pulling more power in order to put out less heat. And that's because they become less efficient at colder temperatures, but doesn't mean they still can't qualify. And as you can see, th these numbers vary widely because even at five degrees here, the output can be substantially higher depending on what the indoor set point is. And so that's what we're going to talk about in terms of, you know, how the system works from a heating capacity perspective. So 720 CFM is what we're using just to keep it apples to apples. And if we scroll down to this column for 47, which is right here, you can see that there's a couple things now are notable. Number one is that this 18 seer heat pump does not derate at 47 degrees. So it's basically 100%, you know, output. This is 24 thousand BTUs. So two tons of heating at that 47 degrees. Technically, it looks like max output, you know, up here is at 24.9. So maybe D rates a little bit, but it's basically at two tons of heating. And then that requires 2.2 kilowatts of power. So we take this number, this 24, we multiply this 24 by 2.2 or 0.293, and that gives us, that converts that from BTUs to kilowatts of heat, because remember, watts or kilowatts can also be a measure of heat, not just energy consumption. And then we take that and we divide that by the kilowatts used, which is 2.2. So this is the amount of energy the system's using. That spits out a COP of 3.19 at 47 degrees Fahrenheit. So this right here, we'll call that a COP of 3.2. Now to compare that to the Daikin Fit, we'll take a quick peek and I'll show you what this looks like. Like. So the two-ton system here, by comparison, has a COP of 3.4. So the Daikin fits slightly more efficient, but basically, you know, they're neck and neck. It's not that big of a difference. Daikin fits basically neck and neck with the system. So this is at 47 degrees. Um, 
what about at cold climate capacity? So we go over here to when it's, you know, at five degrees Fahrenheit, we can see that the output drops to 18.7 in terms of BTUs per hour. We times that by 0.293. And then we take that number and divide that by our kilowatts used, which is 2.64. That gives us a COP of 2.07 at five degrees Fahrenheit, which when we compare it to the Daikin Fit system, you can see that at five degrees Fahrenheit, our COP is right at 2.0. So it's technically this system, this 18 sear is technically more efficient at five degrees as a cold climate heat pump at these given parameters at the two ton model. But basically they're pretty much neck and neck. And so my, my point in going through this is that the systems are almost neck and neck and, and identical in terms of their actual performance, their COP, their SEER ratings vary a little bit. Where the Bosch system really stands apart and, and kind of sets itself apart, as you can see, is the fact that the EER rating is higher because if you do look at the EER rating, if you go in here and look at some of the matchups, you can see that um, the EER ratings are basically enough to qualify it for a lot of those, not just the tax credits, but it actually, some of the systems, for example, in the Denver market, the two-ton and the four-ton system both qualify for the uh, cold climate heat pump rebate, which is a $1,700 rebate in the Denver metropolitan area, which is a very, well, any anywhere you're in Excel territory in, you know, the Denver metro territory, which Excel covers a lot of areas, but that's a, you know, a great rebate to be able to take advantage of. And so that's really the advantage of the Bosch system is that as you can see, the performance is almost neck and neck. The decibel ratings are almost identical. If you're from, I talk more about the Dyke and Fit in another video, but 56 decibels are basically identical. One thing that you will notice, obviously, by comparing the Bosch versus the Dyke and Fit is that, you know, the Bosch is this, you know, nice big <laughs> box that sits outside. It's still not massive, but it is, you know, a bigger system. Whereas the Dyke and Fit is a nice side discharge system. So for properties with tight lot lines, it is a better system in terms of, you know, it can fit in tighter places, but they're both going to be quiet. They're both going to be efficient. And one benefit that the Bosch has, at least in Denver, is that it does qualify for that rebate and therefore it comes uh, out to be a little bit more cost-effective solution by comparison with the Daikin Fit. However, the Daikin Fit does qualify for um, some rebates that they have internally. And again, here's a picture of the Daikin Fit so you can see what that looks like, that nice side discharge system. But the bottom line is that's you know, it for our head to head review of the uh, Dyke and Fit system versus the Bosch 18 sear system. So we hope you enjoyed that. If you did find this content helpful, please make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver, Colorado or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service, so you can stay up-to-date when we start servicing your metro. So we hope you found that content helpful, and if you did, uh, please make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And as mentioned earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now, so make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already, and we'll catch you on the next episode.